Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to the Asian Connection Mortgage Podcast, where we connect Asian Canadians together to talk about anything related to real estate, mortgages, and finances, based out of Vancouver. Our host is John Lee, mortgage broker with the Rise Mortgage. Grab a bubble tea and enjoy the episode. And today we're diving into a crucial topic for all home buyers, understanding how your credit score is determined in Canada. Your credit score plays a significant role in your mortgage approval process. So it's really important to know what factors influence it. And we talk about all the factors that will affect your credit score and interesting facts, even I didn't know that will cause your credit score to go down. So let's do this. So what is the credit score? Credit score is a number that shows your credit worthiness. And the higher the number, the better the score, a better credit worthiness, lower the score, the lower the credit worthiness, obviously. But what is the range? So the range is 300, that's the very lowest, and 900, that's the very highest in Canada. And lenders use this score to assess whether or not they want to lend money to you. And what's considered good credit? It's anything above 680. There are two main credit bureau companies. Uh, one is Equifax and the other is TransUnion. I find as a mortgage broker, uh, we pull Equifax almost all the time. I'm not sure why, but yeah, Equifax seems to be the go-to for mortgage brokers and lots of lenders as well. And what happens is that uh, many different financial institutions, they will communicate to Equifax or TransUnion on a monthly or quarterly basis to communicate whether or not you've been paying your debts on time. So here are the things that will affect your credit score. And here's the breakdown. I'm going, I categorize it from the most important to the least important. So number one, most important payment history. Of course, obviously that's the most significant factor. It makes up 35% of your credit score. So consistently paying your bills on time boosts your score. While if you miss your payments or if you go into collections, bankruptcies, that will significantly lower it. Number two, credit utilization. So credit utilization accounts for 30% of your score. And this is the ratio of your current credit card balance to your credit limit. So just to give you an example, if you have one credit card, and you have $5,000 credit limit, and you've used 2,500, that means your credit utilization is 50%, which is 2,500 divided by 5,000, that's 50%. Now, say you have two credit cards, each one has $5,000 credit limit. In total, it's 10,000, but your outside balance is still 2,500. So in this case, your credit utilization will be 2,500, divided by 10,000, which is 25%. So the target or the aim is to keep your ratio below 30% to help improve your credit score. Now, one way to also help with improving your credit score is to increase your credit limit. And I know like this bugs me as well, especially when you go to banks and the teller will be like, oh, I can like your pre proof to increase your credit limit. Most of the time, people are just annoyed and just like, no, no, give me my money or deposit money and I just want to get out of there. But no, if you have 1000 as your credit limit and you're pre-approved to say 5000 you may actually want to say yes because by increasing your credit limit, you can reduce your percentage for credit utilization and this will actually help your credit score. So the length of your credit history contributes to 15% of your score. The longer you've had credit accounts open, the better. So if you have any old credit card accounts that you don't you know, use often, it's just there uh, sitting around maybe in a box <laughs> somewhere, by keeping it open, that can actually benefit your score because it will increase the average age of your credit history. So make sure you keep those accounts open and it will help improve your score. Types of credit, having a diverse mix of credit types, such as you know, credit cards, installment loans, mortgages, line of credit, this makes up for 10% of your score. This shows lenders you can manage different types of credit responsibly. And why that's the case is because paying down a car loan is very different from paying down a line of credit. 
the payment structure is just very different. But yet, if you are able to be responsible to continue to pay it on time and pay it down, this will show that you can handle different types of structure and this will improve your credit score. Makes up 10% though. Lastly, recent inquiries. So recent inquiries on new applications account for the remaining 10%. What this means is that if you go to lots of different financial institutions, and you go, oh, I need money, and, and they pull your credit, this affects negatively because the algorithm will say, oh, oh, this, this guy looks like he's very desperate. And if he's desperate, that means his financial situation might not be that great. Therefore, we're going to lower the score. It can be. Most of the time, it's not. Most of the time, like it's uh, likely people who I'm helping with to get a mortgage, and they naturally want to shop around. So they go to one bank, pull the credit, go another, repeat the story, pull the credit again. And you now there's quite a few, you know, there's at least a big five and possibly other lenders as well. So that's why it's a good way to uh, approach a mortgage worker because for us, we will pull it once, create a profile. And with the same profile, we're going to go to different lenders. So it just uh, helps with their credit score. And also a lot of headaches as well. So you don't have to keep repeating the same story over again, over again and also submit your documents. So I want to move forward to the next thing, which is interesting facts that can decrease your credit score. Some of these I didn't know. So it's really interesting for me to share it with you. So number one, so library fines, parking tickets, speeding tickets, utility bills. Although these are not from financial institutions, they also communicate to credit bureaus as well. And if you don't pay them, it does get sent to collections, it will get reported, and it will significantly lower your score. And you know what? When I do help clients and they have these situations where you know, they have a TELUS bill, for example, and they're just so adamant and determined not to pay it because you know, it's them that messed up. And uh, you just think it's unfair. So you're going to change your address, not let them know, and outside out of mind, everything's good. Until you need to borrow money and you see that it's shown on your credit bureau. And what happens pretty much all the time is you have to pay it out. So you will have to pay it out. If you don't agree, try your best to talk to them, try to settle it. But the worst is just to leave it and walk away. That's the worst. Number two is co-signing loans. So co-signing loans makes you equally responsible for the debt, even though you're not taking advantage of the loan or, or credit line. So what happens is that if the primary borrower misses payments, if, and you may not even know because no, you're just the co-signer, this will affect your credit score negatively. So make sure you are co-signing someone who you trust. And if not, just stay away. Um, that's probably the best way and not get involved. High credit inquiries, so multiple hard inquiries in a short period of time will cause your credit score to go down. And I want to emphasize hard credit inquiries. What this means is that uh, when we pull your credit, it's the full detailed credit report. You can go on your cell phone and some banks, they do offer uh, credit polls and these are soft polls. So if you just want to get an idea of uh, what your score is, if there's anything that you should be aware of in your credit report, maybe to avoid fraud, for example, those won't affect your credit score. So you can pull them as often as you want. Credit card utilization spikes. It's Christmas or you're going on vacation and you just rack up your credit card very quickly this will lower your score. So if, you, if that happens, just make sure you pay down your balance really quickly. I get it. Sometimes you just want to use your credit card to rack it up, collect some points, but try not to leave it there for too long. Just pay it down as quickly as possible. Another thing that I can think of is those promotions where they'll send a letter to you and be like, oh, if you transfer your outside balance to your credit card, then you're going to get a 0% interest and uh, with a 2% fee. And well, it's very tempting. And I get those all the time. 
And of course, if you want to take advantage of it, you're going to try to max it out because who doesn't want 0%? But if that happens, um, this will affect your credit score. Is This will lower it, especially if you are reaching very close to the credit limit. That will hurt your credit. So if you're doing it, just be more mindful of that. Next one is ignoring small debts. So some people, you know, they're just like, oh, it's just small. Like, um, I don't need to pay it. It's just a few dollars. Regardless of whether it's big or small, it will probably go to collections and it will affect your score negatively. You'll notice that none of the things that I mentioned before that affects credit score it talks about the outstanding balance. It's really just the payment history. So it doesn't matter if your loan is $100,000 or $5. It is just <laughs> as damaging if you don't pay it on time or you don't pay it off. So make sure big or small, you are on top of all your debts. Uh, next and last one would be settling for less than old. So say if you have a credit card statement, outside balance 5,000, but you only have 3,000 to, to pay and you want to pay it. So good on you. It's better than having a late payment or not paying at all. You are paying it down, but because you're not paying it off, to zero, this will negatively impact your score. Make sure, you know, it, I know it's tough sometimes and make sure if, if you do have outside balance, you pay it down uh, sooner than later. Also, because if you have outside balance on a credit card, they're charging you like almost 20%. So you don't want to be paying that much. It's just not financially responsible. And uh, we will call that bad debt. So for those who are listening to this and they want to improve your credit score as soon as possible. What can you do? First things first, pay all your bills on time, big or small. And also keep your credit utilization low. So if you have a credit limit of 10,000, don't max it out to 10,000, maybe just two or 3,000. Use cash for, for the rest of their, your bills. Also avoid just opening multiple new accounts in a short period of time. Uh, make sure you are monitoring your credit reports. So doing those soft credit pulls to make sure there's no errors, uh, there's no fraud, and to just make sure that whatever is on the report reflects accurately on your financial situation. So I hope this was helpful to you. If you need help reading your credit report or if you have any questions related to mortgages, email me, connect with me, and I would love to chat with you. So until next time, keep building your future one payment at a time. Take care, guys. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's episode, please consider giving us a review and subscribing to our podcast on your favorite platform. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time on the Asian Connection Mortgage Podcast.